In this video, I'm going to be discussing application monitoring using Eternity, and specifically the core concepts of how Eternity monitors application performance. First, I'll be discussing Eternity and application monitoring, and the different levels at which Eternity can monitor an application. Next, I'm going to discuss the deepest level of monitoring, which is what is a business activity. And last, I'm going to go and show you a demonstration of creating a business activity for a web-based application, as well as for a thick client app. For Eternity, there's three different levels of application monitoring that we can perform. Discovered apps, managed apps, and then business activities for managed applications. For discovered apps, these are any applications that a user consumes and that they directly interact with. We automatically monitor the usage of those applications, their wait times, and any crashes that occur. Managed applications are ones that you specifically define, and you can do that via defining Eternity to monitor a specific process or executable, or for a specific URL. In addition, you can add background processes, for example, security software that's running on your machine. With thick client applications, we'll be able to monitor the launch time as well as resource consumption of that app. For web-based applications, for example, SharePoint.com, we'll be monitoring basic page response timing and any errors that are seen by the application, for example, 500 errors. For business activities, this is where we can add the ability to monitor click to render performance for both web or thick client based applications. For web, we can monitor things like how long does it take to display the home page once you click the login button, or how long does it take to search for an account. For thick client applications, things like opening a file, saving a file, or exporting, essentially any interaction that the user performs. And we're going to be going into a little bit more detail about exactly how we do this further into the video. So let's take an example of how this is going to be used in real life. So let's say there's an application called New App that's just got released to the market. And John starts to use that application with anywhere enterprise. So New App now has one user. That application will automatically be discovered by Eternity, and it'll be monitored for its usage, wait time, and crashes. John's team starts to use New App because it's working really well and it's providing a lot of value. So at that point, you can look at the amount of usage that we're seeing within Eternity and say, we need to add this as a managed app. So you would add newapp.exe to the managed app list. At that point, Eternity is going to be able to monitor the launch time for new app and all the resource consumption that's going on. And finally, as the whole department starts to use new app and the user base expands and the business importance increases, we can create business activities Things like save item, open item, share item, all these different interactions within the application can be defined to better monitor the application performance. In addition, these business activities can be tracked and alerted on when performance degrades. So let's take an example of what that could look like if there was a change to new app. So in this case, we're using our change management tooling within the Eternity console to see the before and after for different interactions within new app. And what we can see is that save item and open item to the top left have performed worse as a result of the change, and open folder and open dialog have actually gotten better. And that the degradation in performance is only happening at the Hartford and Los Angeles office. The users at Austin aren't actually experiencing any problem, and they have better overall performance. So let's talk a bit more about business activities and what they're able to do with monitoring click to render performance. When I say click to render, what do I mean? In this case, for click to render performance, what I mean is the action the user takes, so a click, and then the result of that click. So specifically, a business activity is a user action in a specific context. So an action can be a click or a key press. Context is in a specific app where you've clicked on a specific button. This could be thick client or web-based. And then the action result, so something changed. So the action you took in a certain context and then the action result. For example, Jane clicked login on the support site in Internet Explorer. So that's a web-based business activity that we want to monitor the time from the login button is clicked to the time that the page is actually displayed. The user could also press enter after typing her password in as well. So there's different ways in which that action may be performed. Another would be John clicking save in Notepad, so a thick client application, and the time it takes from the save button to be clicked to the time it takes it to go away. So the activity response 
is a part of the business activity, and that's where we monitor click to render performance, specifically how fast the application responds to the user's request. And we break down this response time into client, network, and backend time. So here's an example of that for a thick client application and one that we're all using, which is Outlook. Eternity can monitor from the time that the user presses the send button, which is the start of an event, to the time that this window disappears as the completion of that event. So how long does it take to send to the outbox? And here's an example of that being monitored within Eternity. In this case, we can see that send mail to outbox activity took 1.53 seconds and 0.74 seconds was spent communicating with the back end. When we define a business activity for a thick client application, for example, Outlook or SAP or even Notepad, we use the action plus the context plus the action result to do that. So the action, a click or a key press, the context, which application or process, and then which GUI element within that application did you interact with. The action result can be things like a UI change, an object appears on the screen or disappears, name changes, or a change in focus. The source data that we use in this case is primarily the Windows Accessibility API. This is an API that's created by Microsoft specifically to allow people that have visual impairment to interact with a computer. And what we do with Eternity is we leverage that API to, in essence, give Eternity the ability to see the screen. In addition to the Accessibility API, we also can use the Application API. There, Eternity hooks into the application and watches for events so that it can identify the click or key press event as well as the action results that are there. We also can define web-based business activities in things such as Internet Explorer or Chrome. In there, a similar construct is used, an action, a context, an action result, the action being a click or key press, but we also can use things like an HTTP get or post. The context, things like the URL and title bar are used, and page elements, such as the name of the element, the type, and the content of that element. The action result can be things like a change in context, an HTML complete coming back, a page element change, or an HTTP response code. The source data that we're using is, in many cases, a web browser extension or plugin for the browser that lets us see what's happening within the browser itself, looking at the windsock layer, and then UX events. So for a web-based application, for example, logging into support, it's very similar to what I had shown at the beginning of the video, where we want to click the login button, and attorney is going to be monitoring to know, are you on the support site, and did you just click the login button? And there we're going to be monitoring for a specific thing to happen. In this case, the view cases page element to appear. And from the time it takes to the login button is clicked to the time that view cases page or that view cases element appears to the user, that's what we're going to use to time that transaction in the business activity. So click to render is what we're monitoring from the user action to the response from the application. In addition to that, the transaction time is being broken down. So from the start of the activity to the end, how much time was spent on the client, on the network, or waiting on the back end. So let's dig into this a little bit further. When the user goes to the support site and they click the login button, that's going to contribute to the start of an event. And we're going to break that event down into client, network, and back end time. So when the user clicks the login button, that starts the timer, and we begin to calculate client time until the first network traffic is sent from the client to the server. Then we're going to have some back-end time where the application is responding to the user. And this is calculated from the last request to the first response minus the round trip time. And then when the server responds, we're going to be monitoring the time it takes to receive all those responses and adding up the total time to send and receive to calculate the network time. And then finally, the time it takes to render to the actual user so they can see what's on the screen. So the page shows up, and then when the view cases page element appears, that's when we define the activity to be completed and the entire activity response to be calculated as a combination of client time, network time, and backend time. So here's an example of that in our production environment, 
where we're monitoring the Riverbed support site and the home page, which is what is shown once you log in to support. In this case, this user had a response time of 6.79 seconds and six seconds of that as a result of backend time. In addition to capturing the transaction time for the click to render event and breaking it down to client, network, and backend time, we're also capturing environmental details on the client. So I wanna show you an example of what that looks like. So in this case, I'm gonna look at the raw data for a single event, in this case, a user accessing Salesforce and opening the case list. And the data I'm gonna show you is pulled straight from the REST API from Eternity, and it's in a JSON format. And this is what that data looks like. So I'll highlight a couple key things that I think are gonna be useful. First, we have our activity response. We have the version of Chrome that we're running. I can see that this user was hooked into our data center in downtown San Francisco via the VPN concentrator. And I know that because they're on VPN. I know the device name, the model, some details about CPU and memory and things of that nature. The HTTP status code that was received from the server when loading that web page. Their power plan, were they wired or wireless? The network time, some page processing details, which specific server IP they hit, and server name, the server time, as well as details about the actual user, in this case, a senior escalation engineer working out of his home office in Texas. So how does one create a business activity? Well, first, you have to determine what specifically is the app. Is it a web-based or thick client application? For web-based apps, we recommend using the Web Activity Creator. This is a plugin that allows you to identify the start and end of events within web-based applications. For thick client applications and running on the desktop, you can use the Attorney Recorder and Designer. The recorder records the user's screen and then is able to record at the same time the events that are happening. For example, key press events, pushes of buttons, changes of title bars, things of that nature. That recording is then sent into the designer and within the designer, you're matching up the specific event that the user did, for example, clicking the login button to the log within Eternity that identifies that that action was taken. And then you would identify where the end of the action is and that's essentially what's gonna complete the business activity signature that you would then load into Eternity and push to your agents. Now for the demos. First, the web activity creator, and then the attorney recorder and designer. In this demo, I'm gonna show you very briefly how you can use the web activity creator to create business activities in Eternity. So I have the activity creator plugin installed, it's running, and now I wanna go and track the login process to log into Riverbed's support site. So first, we're gonna add an element. and create a new activity. Start, click. So the clicking of the login button is gonna be the start of our activity. Once I save it and actually do that, it'll verify that this is triggering properly. So you can see the start right there. Now I'm gonna add an additional element. I'm gonna mark the viewing of these specific pieces of the page. So view cases, token, sysdump analyzer, and support contracts showing up as the completion of the page render. And I'm gonna use that as my completion event. So let's go and test it. So I click the login button. I can see the start of the event then the page displays as the completion of the event. And it took a little over three seconds to finish. So that's how this works in essence. And then from here, you would export this specific activity over to Eternity to then have that be deployed to your agents to monitor a specific web page. This also works for more complicated web pages as well. And there's a longer demo you can watch to see how that works with things like sending emails within Outlook Web Access. Now let's take a look at using the Attorney Recorder and Designer to record a desktop application. 
In this case, we'll use Wireshark as an example. In this video, I'm going to show you briefly how we utilize Eternity Recorder and Eternity Designer to create business activities for desktop applications. So in this case, I'm going to do this with Wireshark as Riverbed's the corporate sponsor of Wireshark. So in the specific example, I'm going to take the open PCAP as the interaction that I want to track. So right now I'm going to go open, pick my PCAP, open it up. close my bookmark and stop the capture. Now while that's saving, we'll switch over to using the Attorney Designer. So now with the Attorney Designer open, I'm going to create a new activity in Wireshark called Open File. Now I'm going to load my recording. And what you can see on the screen is a video recording of my desktop. And then on the bottom left hand side are the individual events that Eternity saw while I was interacting with the desktop. And then what I can do is just go straight to that bookmark section of the video, identify the relevant point in the video that I'm looking for. Which is right about there. And if we take a look at what we see in here, I have a mouse click event. I'm gonna use that as the start. And then if we take a look at when this finishes, we can see that the title changes. And right here we can identify that is when the name of the window changed as the title of that changed to the PCAP file itself. And I'm going to use that as the completion of the event. In addition to doing things like this, there's a lot of configurability about how you identify when specifically went and opened a file when the file actually loaded. And then once you've clearly identified what you want to use as your start and end conditions, you'll then be able to go over to this and then generate the signature load it into Eternity, and then push it out to your agents. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, please reach out to your Riverbed account team.